So you were a newer teacher and your college prep courses and your student teaching, if you even had student teaching, didn't prepare you for behavior after behavior that's happening in your class. Maybe your students talk over you, they don't pay attention to your lesson, they yell across the room to their friends, they say rude things to you, they get up and walk around and are generally disrespectful to you. Now raise your hand if this is you and immediately hit that like button if you can relate. In today's video, I'm gonna break down why this is happening to you and some steps that you can take to start to fix this. Now, it's an aspect of classroom management that nobody's really talking about for some reason. So I think it's going to be really important for you to make sure that you stay to the end so you can get all of the advice that I have for you. So when I was describing those behaviors, I'm sure that you started to feel your blood pressure rise and there was a feeling of anger and resentment. But a big one is probably a feeling of failure. I mean, we've seen other teachers with perfectly well-behaved classrooms and we know what a well-behaved classroom looks like. We just can't figure out why it's not happening for us. And a lot of times we wonder, why are we stuck with these kids? And what did we do to be punished? And the sad part is that for a lot of teachers, they feel like because of the classroom management issues and all of these behaviors, they feel like they're not meant to teach teach. They feel like teaching isn't for them and that this is not what they signed up for. So the first thing that we need to think about in the situation is that this is a cause and effect relationship between you and your students. And I hate to break it to you. Chances are you're probably on the end of two spectrums. Either you're a little bit too meek or you're a little bit too strict. And that causes them to act out more. It's just a vicious cycle. And you might not believe this because it feels otherwise. These behaviors are not personal to you. There is a 99.9% .9 chance that the students that are acting up in your class are acting up in every other class for probably every other teacher that they've had up until they've had you. Now, maybe the exception is their favorite class like PE or art or band or something like that. But the rest of the time, especially in their main classes, they are acting the exact same way that they are for you. So here's the thing, and I'm sure that you learned this or someone mentioned this, but you have have a very tiny window of opportunity to win these kids over. And by win, I don't mean that they have to love you and like you right away, but you have a small window during which they are judging you and during which time they are also trying to see where that line is. And it's not a matter of judging you as in whether or not they like you. They're judging how far they can take things. They're judging to see how you're going to react when they do certain things. And from how you react in the beginning, maybe that first week that you're with them, that's going to determine how they are for the rest of the time until you repair things. And then at that point, you're just treading water. And this is similar to when we know someone who kind of rubs us the wrong way or they annoy us. Like we try to act civilized around them just so that we can not cause too much friction in the moment. But there's just something about them that just doesn't agree with us. And as adults, we just tend to be more civilized even if someone is making us mad. For example, if someone cuts you off in line, you might grumble about it. You may honk your horn or, you know, maybe say something under your breath. But in general, we just kind of grumble about it and move on. Maybe you don't, but a lot of people do. Or maybe you were the one who offended someone and they yelled at you. And if you're someone who likes conflict, you might have gotten into it with them. But if you're someone who doesn't like conflict because you just like to keep the peace, then that really like threw you off when they were really aggressive towards you and it kind of made you go in. Basically, what I'm saying is that we're not used to that type of aggression in our lives on a daily basis. So when you were faced with those microaggressions, even if it's passive aggressive behavior or eye rolling or, you know, whispering to their neighbor or slouching in their seat and not paying attention to you, when we are faced with those types of behaviors, it feels really aggressive towards us. And we don't necessarily know how to handle it because as adults, we just really don't face that on a daily basis. Now, for some of us, when this happens in the classroom, we might feel intimidated or or fearful that we're going to lose control and it shows in our face. Or maybe for some of you, you get really angry and indignant in terms of how they're acting. And so you match their energy. Maybe you come back with sarcasm or anger. And so the students are going to see this and they're going to feel this and they are going to act appropriately. So you can see how this is a vicious cycle. They will always test that line. And you guys, this is the biggest thing that I had to realize. The line is your 
emotions. You're going to test your emotions in the beginning just to see how far they can go. That was the biggest revelation that I made about classroom management. Students are children. Even if they're 17, they're still children. And they will toe that line to see how far they can go until you make it abundantly clear and defined without harming their feelings or threatening them. So at this point, after saying all that, you might be angry with me because you might be thinking, are you saying it's my fault that these students are acting up? No, 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 not at all. I know it feels like that, but really I'm just describing human nature, especially with kids. Your students have learned these behaviors from being with other teachers, from their peers, from other adults. They've basically been nurtured and molded into the person that they are. So whether it's parents that are too strict and they're rebellious, or parents with no boundaries and they can get away with anything or same thing with other adults or maybe their peers who let them get away with something or maybe they were bullied. There's just a lot of factors that go into what their coping mechanisms are and those coping mechanisms manifest themselves into how they're behaving in your class. If they're a jerk to you, there's a, like I said before, there's a 99% chance or I think I said 99.9% .9 chance that they're doing that to other students and other adults all the time. And also you have learned behaviors in terms of how you respond to their behaviors. If you were bullied, told you weren't good enough, or some other kind of childhood trauma, you have your own coping mechanisms in terms of how you respond. And you may actually respond in a similar way to them, but just in the adult version. And this is especially true if you have experienced some kind of childhood trauma and you haven't worked through it already. You might even know that what happened to you as a child is manifesting itself into your adult life and it's affecting how you are with other people. So maybe you get really angry or you get really intimidated with confrontation or when people are being really ornery. Maybe you're one of those people who feels the need to speak your truth. You have to just say what you feel and whatever you mean no matter how people feel about it. Or maybe on the opposite spectrum, you're someone who's a people pleaser and you do everything humanly possible, even if it kills you inside, to just make everyone happy. And you know what? You're probably responding to your students in the same way. But the thing about your students, and sometimes we forget about this, is that they have fewer coping mechanisms and they don't really know how to deal with all of the stuff in their life. They don't know how to make themselves feel safe aside from how they're acting out. They don't know how to make themselves feel seen or heard or just noticed or cared about other than the way that they've been acting out. In fact, probably these other adults in their lives or other students are reinforcing these behaviors with the negative attention or maybe just you know giving up and letting them get away with things because they just don't want to have to deal with it and you guys this is just where your students are at they honestly have no control over it kind of how it is. I think the hardest part for me that I have to constantly remind myself when students are acting out is that I am the adult in the room. And while I'm not perfect in terms of how I react to these types of behaviors, I can control myself, but I can't control them. Eventually, I would like to mold them into better behaviors, but in the moment when they're acting out, I'm not gonna control them. I can only control how I react and what I do next to repair that situation. And the hardest truth that I had to face in these past past 21 years is that I have to change how I present myself to my students and that will result how they react and present themselves to me. Our goal is to be that person who actually doesn't get angry when students act this way. So they'll act that way in the beginning, but then they're going to see that they're not going to be necessarily reprimanded or humiliated or punished because of the behavior. They're not going to be called a name or made to feel less than because of the behavior. They're going to feel safe enough to not have to resort to those behaviors. And even if they don't like your class or they don't like you, they're eventually going to see that they don't have to do that anymore. You're going to see that you're not going to have to be their friend, but you're also not going to have to be a tyrant. And you're going to have a class that is more harmonious. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to be perfect and that they're never going to act out, but then it's going to be in a way where we all have a chuckle about it. Maybe they do yell something across the class, but it's in response to something that you're talking about and the class 
is having a laugh about it and they refocus back to you. That's kind of, you know, that fun class atmosphere that we want where everyone feels safe and they can be who they are. So what do we do about this? First, you need to be honest with yourself about how you present yourself to your students. Now, obviously, if you just graduated from college and you just got your teaching credential, you may not look a whole lot older than them if you're teaching high school. And probably you're nervous and they can sense that. So to compensate, maybe you're trying to be that cool TikTok teacher who does TikToks with your students and dances in the middle of class and things like that. And you know their particular lingo and vernacular. Maybe you're a super strict and unemotional teacher and you have this different persona where you're like, I am the teacher, super professional. I hate to say this, but both are going to yield negative results. The sweet spot is actually somewhere in the middle. Someone who has firm boundaries, but is human, who is maybe willing to look vulnerable at certain times in front of the students, but also who definitely has command of the classroom. If you don't know how you present yourself, you're gonna have to record yourself. You're gonna have to bust out your phone and videotape yourself so that you can look at yourself and even better ask someone else to give you some feedback on your presence in the room. I know that we hate doing this because we did this in college when they asked us to record our lessons, but this is different because you were doing that for your grade. You were doing that to get your credential. Now you're doing it for you. You're doing it for your benefits that you can be really honest and make the appropriate changes so that you can have better classroom management. And not just better classroom management, but just a better relationship with the students. Next, it would be really helpful if you were completely honest about how you handle confrontation and conflict. Now, if you know that it makes you retreat into your shell, or for you, it turns you into a rage monster, then admit it, confront it, and then most of all, decide how you're going to deal with it and balance it out. How are you going to counteract those emotions when you feel it in class. Now for me, I was more on the end of wanting to retreat into my shell. I'm a people pleaser. My sign, my sun sign is cancer. So I just want to make everyone happy around me. And if a student, even a 12 year old would talk back to me, I can still feel it. The anxiety inside of me like, oh no, what are they going to do? And so, so how I balance that is I'll have a poker face, not emotional, and I'll give them the teacher stare. That one is hard. You need to practice that. Or maybe I'll just have a slightly amused look on my face and I'll just be matter of fact in terms of what I say next and how I address the behavior. Now, I'm not a psychiatrist or a therapist. I'm just someone who has gone through a lot of therapy. I've listened to plenty of self-help podcasts and audiobooks. And honestly, I love to learn about psychology. But I can tell you that not just for teaching, just in general, it's really important to be honest about your default coping mechanism and seeing if they're hurting or helping you in terms of creating a real relationship with your students and in terms of having solid classroom management because your current reactions are causing them to dig in and do more of the unwanted behavior. Your current reactions are not encouraging them to fall in line and behave no matter how much you bribe or berate them. I hope you understand that I'm not saying that there's something wrong with you. I really want to get this message across and is that I'm not telling teachers that you have to change who they are completely in order for them to be effective teachers. And I'm not saying that your teaching is flawed or that all of your teaching problems are your fault. What I'm trying to do is illuminate how working through your own personal and emotional development is going to go so far, not only in your personal life, but in terms of how you are as a teacher and your classroom management. It will transform how you show up and carry yourself and your students will truly believe that you're a leader, not their friend, but also not a tyrannical dictator. So one goal, is that when students fall out of line, you can be unemotional about it and you're going to address the behavior and not the student. You wanna separate how they're acting from who they are as a person because just because they act that way, we don't wanna pigeonhole them for being a certain type of student. That's something that other people have done to them and it's really damaged them and it's causing them to act out this way even more. So we use words like, I don't appreciate that you yelled across the room or that tone that you used was really disrespectful. So we're going to talk about the actual thing that they did, but we're not gonna say something like, you are disrespectful. Do you see the difference? That tone was disrespectful as opposed to you are disrespectful. And I know it doesn't seem like a big difference or that 
that is just semantics. But when we frame it that way, then we're not making it personal. It's just something that they did in the moment. Now, it could take a month or a couple months to get this down, especially if your students are acting out on a constant basis and you just want to default into old behaviors. It's really hard. I can tell you from experience that it takes a while to pull the emotion out of the situation and not react how you just instinctively need to react to feel safe and protect yourself. But it pays off so big in the end. And it helps if you're an engaging teacher, which I mentioned in this video. But even if you're not, once you have your students at a point where they trust you and believe that you're a leader, they're actually going to start acting out less. And a bonus is a lot of times they start to police themselves because they don't want to see their peers treating you that way. I know it's a lot. I know I didn't give you any tips like having like putting stars on a board or having some kind of a token system or just any kind of of, you know, other steps that you can take for classroom management. But honestly, there are a lot of videos on that that are great. I love watching those other videos and I get tips from them too. But I really think that a piece of this, that a lot of those other videos are missing is the psychology part, the part about how we have to rein our emotions in. And I'm not saying again that there's something wrong with us, but we just have to be conscious about how we present ourselves to these kids. And when you can do that and act objectively and not react in a way that they expect all adults to act, then they will in turn change their behavior and stop doing those things. The teachers that can master their emotions are the ones that you'll see never have issues with their students. And I know it sounds impossible. I know it sounds like something that is utopian, but you'll see that they rarely have behavior issues. And when they do, they're nipped in the bud and they're not ongoing. Also, the teachers who can master their emotions have fewer issues with parents, fewer parent complaints, and just fewer issues in general when it comes to student behaviors. I really think that for those of you that are struggling with students acting out in your classroom and it makes you want to quit, this could potentially save you from wanting to quit teaching. You'll see that once you turn your student behaviors around, and maybe it's not this school year, maybe it's not until next school year, but when you get this down, you're actually going to find that you love teaching. Now, if in addition to classroom management, you're having a hard time with how to actually deliver a lesson, maybe you don't really know what type of a lesson to use with what type of activity, be sure to check out this video next where I give you a bunch of tips and a bunch of different ways on how to give the best lesson ever.